Grace is in the building. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Wow, I really mumbled that just now. <laughs> fumbled the ball there. So happy to finally have you. I feel like we've been meaning to do this for a very long time. <laughs> I know. It's been a long time coming. I know. So I want to do just like, we're doing girl chat style today. We're doing in alignment, out of alignment. You've listened before. Yes. So you know the deal. Mm-hmm. Grace, what is in alignment for you this week or right now in your life? In this season of life, I will actually say, and I know that we'll probably get into it, but running is something that has been in alignment with me and also just like my faith. It's been hand in hand. Okay, interesting. Do you feel that the two kind of intertwine at all? I think they both like have um, progressed naturally just together. And I think because they're both like in alignment, actually, um, I've seen like progression on one side and the other like just kind of take off and it's it's been beautiful okay I just want to go on almost like the a running tangent right now to be honest with you because I have been so inspired by your running journey specifically I think when you see someone who just you relate to in general like we're both females in our 20s trying to figure out you know social media entrepreneurship all of that and then like did you start running from scratch? Were you like, I'm not a runner, I'm just going to start? Or have you been running your whole life? So I've been an athlete okay. ever since I was little. Like, I played all the sports, tennis, soccer, like, figure skating, basketball, like, name you name it. Figure skating. I, I've seen y- your videos yeah. and your picture as well. <laughs> so athlete from the start, the thing is, I was never, like, a runner. The most running, I would say, is like soccer, which is not even like soccer and tennis, I would say, is like the most relatable to what I'm doing. That's more like speed work. Now, running, um, long distance running, I want to be more specific because there's also different types of running. But long distance, what I'm focusing on, which is like half marathon, marathon training, this requires a different level of not just like physical strength, but like mental strength. And I think that's what I meant in the beginning with like alignment is I've seen so much power mentally rather than physically. Do you find that it translates to the rest of your day and like everything else that you're doing in terms of because I know my boyfriend's also a marathon runner and he always says that running is really meditative for him. And I feel like if something is that meditative for that long, like long distance runs and marathon running, it's hours of time for just you and like breaking down mental barriers and I feel like it's a lot it's honestly more mental strength than it is physical sometimes so do you find that you're almost getting the benefits of meditation from it in every other area of your life yeah I think that's what is like really interesting because most people are like well why would you put yourself in pain for so long yeah (laughs) it is painful for sure but there's like such a like the runner's high that you get from doing something that you work so hard for when is it painful I'm like getting into the nitty gritty here because I just oh. I'm I, the most I've ran so far is a 5k and like I haven't experienced the real pain that comes with long distance running yet when for you at this point is it starting to get painful and what do you mean by that is it like actual pain or like out of breath so I think it differs obviously for any runner um and I say any runner because everyone can be a runner if you can put both feet in front of the other you're a runner I hate when people are like I'm not fast enough so I'm not a runner um well so I'll be honest with you hearing that you were an athlete your whole life it's like I'm always looking for someone to tell me that they started from absolute zero they've never moved their body before because I think it's so important to show that you really can do it and start from ground zero. It's not going to be easy, but I'm trying to prove to myself because I've been that person my whole life that's like, I can't run. I'm slow. I hate it. It's just not for me. But the lesson I've learned in life the past like two years is that you have a choice. So truly, anytime I say I can't do something, I forget where I heard this. I think it was Everything is Figure Outable, Marie Forleo's book. She said that anytime you say you can't do something, what you really mean is that you just don't want to enough Mm -hmm. because you truly, there might be sacrifices and it might be hard, but you, you have the choice to try anything you want in life. And I think that's kind of what's inspired me to start running because I kind of want to prove to myself that even though I've said my whole life, I can't do something to show myself that if I commit to training, yes, I can. So it's kind of exactly what you were just saying. Right. And actually, no, um, based on what you just said, I couldn't run more than five miles. 
So I actually wasn't a runner. So right. I basically trained myself during. So I really started taking running seriously in 2020. Everyone did during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's a cliche answer. But the thing is, like, it was more like I couldn't run past five miles. And oh, I never have. And then slowly I started doing like six and then seven. And that's when I was like, wait, I can actually if I work to, for something, um, just like what you're saying is like I can achieve anything. So that's when I first I created my own like half marathon training plan and I ran a half by myself in Central Park during the pandemic. Did you set out that day to do that? Mm -hmm. okay. I picked a date on my calendar, marked it because I, I feel like a huge thing is when you put a date and this goes beyond running. If you put a date in your calendar that scares you, it's there. You have no other choice but to prepare for it. I love that. Yeah. But you could have just signed up for a race. I'm curious why you decided I'm going to do this on my own self-motivation because there is something about a race where there is like, you know, the adrenaline and all the people cheering you on and you can have people come watch you and see you later. So why did you decide I'm just going to pick a date and that day I'm just going to go off on my own and run a half freaking marathon? It was during the pandemic, so there were oh. no races. <laughs> You're but, like, I had no choice, but man. Actually, <laughs> yes. Well, and then the year after that, things started opening. So I did my first, like, I did my first marathon um, two years ago, like, officially. And it was, like, the adrenaline, the people, the energy. I was hooked. So ask your boyfriend if he ever gets, like, the marathon bug because we all get it. <laughs> I feel like right after you're like, oh, my God, thank God it's over. I never want to do this again. And then a couple months later, it's like, hmm, there's another one coming up in five months. Like, Great. why not start training? So when did you decide I'm going to run a marathon? Did you run it by yourself before? Like, did you run 26 miles before the race day? You never actually run 26. That's what I've heard. Yeah. People who do. I don't think that's not a thing like you don't ever run a half marathon before your half marathon okay. and I know that sounds scary and intimidating because it's like how can you actually do it if you've never done it um, it makes sense to me because that extra added layer of adrenaline and everything it, it's exactly actually what you just said before but I'll let you finish but yeah. I feel like what you just said before was like if you can run six then you know you can run seven if you can run mm -hmm. seven you know you can run eight so on race day you're like I know I can push a little harder the, yes that and in addition when you train something for let's just say typically like marathon training or half marathons like 14 to 18 weeks of training that's like four months when you train that long your body gets used to like pushing like mileage after mileage and even like putting yourself in like let's just say um, that long of like a running time span it can actually like push through it I know as weird as that sounds like you think you your mind will tell you otherwise but your body will tell you different so what's the most you'll run before a marathon? Like, what's the highest number of miles you're going to do in your training? I'm going to do 22. Okay. But most people stop at 20 because the last six is a 10K. So true. Yeah. And I feel like, like I keep saying, and I could totally be wrong, but there has to be something to everyone cheering you on and like mm -hmm. being excited about the finish line that carries you through. But it's also funny you say that because... My boyfriend always says the last six miles is the hardest. Yeah. So that's also probably another reason why is because like you're running at most 20. Exactly. So, okay, yeah. Okay. So can you walk us through your training? Yes. And then I'm going to ask you all the tips for like beginners like me, because I'm so inspired by the fact that we'll get to it. But I'm just like so inspired by the like, if I can do six, I can do seven mm -hmm. and like the continuation of that. But how are you? You're starting marathon training next week. This is perfect timing. Mm -hmm. What is your plan? And is it different from your first marathon? Yes. I have a very specific goal. So I'm running two marathons back to back. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why would someone well, do that? <laughs> well, I know. Good question. So one is originally I wanted my sister. She lives in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I wanted her to run New York City with me this mm -hmm. year. I'm already in. And she didn't get lottery. So that meeting, we signed up for a Columbus uh, marathon um, in Ohio in October. And then I'm running New York in November. A month later. Three weeks. What is that recovery going to look like in between? Like, what's your plan for that? 
So I was doing a lot of research because the biggest thing with training for like, I call them back to back, but some people have ran actual back to back. Right. But to me, back to back, as in like three weeks um, difference. It's back to back. <laughs> yes. So I was doing research because injury prevention is going to be huge. I need to figure out how to like maximize like, you know, um, my mileage, but also like tone it down so I'm not going too over the top. And um, I think obviously the first week after the first marathon, I'm going to do nothing, rest, yeah. <laughs> rest, rest, hydrate, all of that. But then after I'm still going to kind of build, it's like they call it taper. Okay. Um, tapering is typically like four weeks, two to four weeks out. And that means that's when you start, you hit your peak and then you start to bring it down, um, bring it down in terms of mileage, uh, f like fueling, um, you're getting more rest, like just really relaxing your body it's done the work and now it's time to rest before your big show <laughs> big day is there one that's more important to you than the other in terms of a goal like pace yes um so in the marathon world <laughs> there are the six major marathons they're called the abbott world major yeah marathon. i feel like, like i know a little majors, more about yeah. this because of ethan okay but Has before ethan i knew nothing so i'm like i know that audience people listening are most people know nothing. I feel like if you're not related to someone or doing a marathon yourself, you're like so clueless. So yes. thank you for breaking this down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, this was so fun to me, like just like researching what they were. Yeah. So there are six major ones. It's New York City, Boston, Chicago, Berlin, London, and Tokyo. Now, Tokyo would be sick. Yes. <laughs> they are all <laughs> spread out. Tokyo. Tokyo is first in March, April, London, Boston, and then um, Berlin is in September, October is Chicago, and November is New York. Are you following on TikTok, what's his name, Pursuit of per Performance or something? He's running all of them this year. He might have he might have started last year, but he's running all of them. And he's running in honor of his dad. And he's been like TikToking the entire journey. And it's amazing. So you should definitely follow him. He's from New York. Oh, okay. I'll yeah. have to look him up. He's like just starting to really blow up and I'm loving watching it. He, he'll like TikTok during his races. Oh, he's one of those. Yeah, one of those. And okay. it's really fun to watch. Oh my gosh. No, I'll have to look into it. A lot of people tend, to, I mean, typically it's really hard to get into all of them in one year, but it's right. not impossible. Um, Can you break down yes. what it takes to get into one? Because I always thought, you know, you want to run a marathon you sign up for the marathon and you raise your money for charity. Like that's kind of all I thought there was to it. You know, like anyone can raise money for charity and sign up for a marathon. But what really does go into getting into one or applying and lottery, like all of those phrases? Yes. So it depends on which major you're talking about. Let's just say New York. I would say if you live in New York, it's the easiest to get in because there's this program New York Roadrunners has called 9 plus 1. You run nine of the races, volunteer for one, and you're in. That's it. You can be a six-hour marathoner or a three-hour marathoner. doesn't matter. Okay, and my friend's actually doing that. Okay. And he was telling me it, it could be any race. It could be a 5K. Any race. Right. You could do half to a 5K. You could pick all 5K. Right. You don't need to be running <laughs> nine half marathon or full marathons. It's like you can literally run. And there's no time qualify. I mean, it's it's like you can literally walk it. And it helps with training. Exactly. Exactly. So I've I've done that last year. So okay. I got in this year. I'm doing it again this year and I'm going to do it next year. Is it a lot, though? I know I know you could just walk it and whatever. But like is having to sign up for nine races by a certain time overwhelming at all or no? No, because it's in, it's within a year. You have okay. 12 months to, and they have races every month. They have like four to five, three to four races a month. Do you find that as someone who's you're clearly very committed and most people are like to the marathon life. It's a lifestyle, truly, mm -hmm. because you're running nine different races plus one. You're doing all of these things throughout the year to prepare. Like it's it's a lot of work. Do you find that you're also craving other workouts or do you just like solely because you said you're an athlete, too. And I know this is something my boyfriend struggles with is mm -hmm. like. But I also love playing hockey and I also love going to the gym for this and mobility and all these things. But I have to stick on my training plan for running and it can get I know for myself, like I would probably find that really I am finding it really hard. Actually, it's like I'm trying to get better at running, but I want to take this workout class and I want to mm -hmm. do this. Do you struggle with that at all? No, because like you said, it's a lifestyle. 
those things are all incorporated in my lifestyle okay so even like yes when people say running plan running like training plan your cross training is included in there your strength training your lifting i've realized like the way i've gotten faster over the past like year or so is because i've been like strength training your core is like i didn't realize there were so many running like mechanic like yeah. mechanics to running um that don't just involve your legs <laughs> So do you go to the gym and like have a strength training plan for yourself too? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Because I'm a class girl. Like I oh. really tried to be a lifting girl yeah. because I do love it. But it started overwhelming me having to program for myself all the time. So I can't imagine having to follow a running schedule and a training schedule. It's a lot. But when you have the motivation of a specific goal and kind of like what you said, having a date that scares you, that must motivate you. Oh, yeah. And that's not to say, like, I feel that way all four months. <laughs> right. You're like, but every day I'm so excited know, to go to the gym. I wake up so early and go to the gym. No. <laughs> um, it's more of, like, I've always been, like, a big picture kind of girl. Meaning, like, yes, I'll have, like, these short races here and there. Like, the 10K, like, the half, like, the, you know, 5K, whatever. But um, I always, like, foresee, yes, my big goal is to do all six of the majors. That is definitely something I plan to do. I'm already crossed. I've already crossed two off. It's amazing. Well, I did Chicago last year. I'm doing New York this year. And amazing. Yeah, hopefully. You have plenty of time. You don't want to like, finish <laughs> them too soon. I know. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. And after that, I'm sure there's like more goals. Like it will never end. Um, and I think that's like the beauty of like training for anything is that there's always something to look forward to there's all with running I always see running though like as like the best thing an adult could do because it you never stop challenging yourself I love that yeah I really like that so if someone's listening including myself that's like oh like every year I go to the marathon and I wish I could be like that and I wish I could do it one day but then I start running so many people start running and I've been here I've done it I've mm -hmm. done like a mile a day and I'm actually learning a few mistakes that I made in the past when I would try to run. I've done like a mile a day and I was like, that was the hardest 10 minutes of my life. <laughs> but as I've done more guided runs and spoken to my boyfriend more seriously about running, I realized I was like running fast. Like people consider going for a run like running, like sprinting. sprinting. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like running for my life. <laughs> oh my I'm God. like, I need this to be done so I would go so fast. But once I started doing guiding, guided runs and whatnot, I was like, oh, they're literally telling me to basically jog. Like, I think there's a misconception mm -hmm. between running and jogging and that there's like a big difference there, which it's just a different pace, right? And it's, can you kind yeah. of speak to like the benefit of starting slow oh or gosh, always yes. being slow, I guess, because you said you run for distance. So are you typically running pretty slow? So slow is relative because... Right. Again, it differs on the person, but I've learned that in order, it's true when they say in order to get fast, you have to slow down. Ironic as that sounds, yeah. but what they mean by that is, for instance, your marathon, let's just say like your marathon like goal pace is like an eight, okay? Um, you're not running everything at less than an eight or less pace for your easy runs because as you're, let's just say you're doing your long runs, if you're like sprinting all of it, you're, you're going to be fatigued and it's just going to, it's not not good for your body to just continuously be fatigued. Yeah. Um, you're not going to get anywhere. So what they mean by running slow is focus on your like breath work and focus on your heart rate. So when they say low heart rate should be your easy runs, um, I have a Koros watch and it, it's really helpful. Garmin has it too. That's what Ethan has, Garmin. Mm, and it, you can see when you're running, it'll tell you your heart rate. Uh -huh. Like let's just say 150 is like my resting. And if I'm running it all in like 150, 154, that means I'm running it easy. Like am I breathing? Am I breathing hard? You know, check if you're, you know, are you panting? Like can you talk? Actually, an easy way to figure out what an easy pace for you is ha have a conversation while you're running. So run with a friend, speak. If you're out of breath, like panting, you're clearly running too fast. That is a really good tip because you can even, if you're running alone, just like try to speak for a minute I know. and see if you see can, if do, you can it. do it. And I've been TikToking myself. So if that's a good thing, like I could just make sure I'm able to TikTok. <laughs> you should do that. Actually have a conversation. And like I have been. I've been doing like oh, run okay, a mile then. with me. Oh, so but now I'm going to make sure because sometimes I'll be like, oh, I can't speak like because I'm panting. But mm -hmm. 
That okay. So then you just mentioned your easy runs, and then you also mentioned that strength training's in your plan. So I'm curious, like for you, obviously you're more experienced, but what is like a typical week in your training life look like? Is it like day one speed run, day two easy run, day three strength training? Like walk us through like what next week, your first week is going to look like maybe. Yeah. So we're starting from week one and it's not that I can't run it, but I'm starting like, you know, three miles easy run. Now for me, easy runs, I always focus on form because you don't want to just like do a run just to do a run. Like you want to make sure, especially with easy, this is where you can, you need to like notice your form. Like is your, are your shoulders like not too uptight? You know, is your back, like, are you, you know, um, slouching when you run or like, are you moving your arms at all? Like, are you like, just start like paying attention to how your body is. And I know you can't see yourself, but you can kind of like do a, a form check. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I focus on holding the same form the whole time. So I focus on form for easy running. And then like, let's just say Tuesdays, I do speed work. Speed work is really important for anyone because this is one that helps you get faster. And two, it actually like, you know, when they say when you're working out, um, you shouldn't always do the same thing over and over. Yes. Like you should like, diversify diversify your body shock your body yep. kind of so speed work is really good for that and um that's like tempo running hill repeats uh fartlek runs i recommend doing those what's you, a fartlek run fartlek is like you change intervals it's like interval running okay and like, where are you figuring this out are you <laughs> using an app i'm sure at this point you kind of program for yourself but like well, finish your week, actually. Okay, and then we'll get... Yeah, finish I'll, your I'll week. share. Finish your it. week, and then I'll ask you all my nitty-gritty questions. Okay. So Tuesday, speed work. Wednesday, I like to do hill repeats, because in my half marathon that I did for United, there were a lot of hills, and I learned so much from that training that hill repeats are so important. Even if, like, let's just say you're running a flat marathon... It just like builds a different muscle in your legs. What is a hill repeat? So you're like going somewhere that's like running up and down hills. So you will where in New York do you do that? Central Park has okay. like Harlem Hill. There's Cat okay. Hill. Yeah. Or I mean, I feel like there's hills. There's hills here. You'll just have you just I'm like New York's pretty flat. Where are you doing that? <laughs> but you're so right. Actually, yeah. But yeah. So hill repeats are very important. And then I'll do like another recovery run, strength training, and then a long run. These are very important, especially for like marathon training. So you're running almost every day. Pretty much. And then one rest day. And you don't get sick of it. No, because you're running easy. Remember, you're not like sprinting. It. Right. So but you don't get like running. bored. Do you have like a playlist? Are you listening to podcasts? Like how do you stay into it? <laughs> I mental think challenge I think it's all because I'm always thinking about the marathon like I visualize the finish line I visualize the actual race and maybe I'm just like crazy you're <laughs> not because you want to hear something really embarrassing I can't run more than three miles and I visualize the marathon <laughs> I will literally be running one mile and I will be like not panting because we run I run slower now but I'll be like oh I want to stop and I just picture the finish line and all the people cheering my name and my friends and family. And that literally gets me through. So I'm crazy. You're not because you can actually you're training for it and can run it. But it really helps because it's it's something that mo what else is going to motivate you other than thinking about like, I don't know, a cheeseburger at the end of I know. the finish line. People like, think about their like post marathon meal. Yeah. Which, oh, my gosh. You yeah, do you do a certain diet? Diet is also, it, this is a whole lifestyle. Yeah. Um, I start eating more carbs. Like, it's very, yeah. It's like dedication. Like, my summer, this, my summer every year basically is like a sacrifice. Like, social life. I go to bed early on Friday nights to wake up for my long runs mm -hmm. on Saturdays. Um, when people want to drink, I'm probably going to cut out drinking. Mm -hmm. Like The whole time? Probably. Just because I'm just that. No, listen, I get it. Like, I like to go to bed early on Fridays regardless of marathon training. So, See, you're already doing it. Well, that's the thing. Like, okay, so great segue because I really, for people listening, if you're this deep in, I don't believe that you don't have 
a little bit of a curiosity of what if I just like what if one day like there's probably people listening who are like I could never because that would be me but yet I'm still so intrigued by it and I still visualize myself crossing the finish line so of course it's low-key like a bucket list item for me and something I really want to do and I think I'm trying to just be a capable runner right now but I'd be lying if I wasn't like also I'm trying to eventually be able to at least run a half marathon or something and when you said like pick a date that scares you it kind of made me feel like okay I think I need to just I think I need to just maybe pick a date for like because otherwise I'm gonna just not commit as hard because I'm like oh this is a lifelong journey of like trying to be a capable run it, runner mm-hmm. but if I have an actual date you're right it, it motivates you to just like do the thing and stop making excuses because like mm-hmm. you're signed up exactly so I guess what is your advice for someone who's listening or me and is like, I would love to do that one day. I don't feel capable, but I also know that I can do anything and like I just would have to really dedicate to it. Where would you say someone starts? Because I don't think your advice would be speed run, hill run, whatever, like the first week (laughs) of running ever. Like I'm talking all the people who are in my run club who couldn't even run a mile and now we're running more, but beginner beginners. Totally like basics like yes I couch, would couch to marathon couch to marathon. <laughs> I honestly I'm actually trained this is like so much fun for me I love being like a run coach oh no way. I'm like so into it that like I'm training my sister from couch to marathon she's couch she's couch you promise yeah like okay, she's so- not her I yeah she is not she's like even trying to like get somewhere within the four hour or something mark for the finish so she does she like work out or whatever? She's just not she a likes runner. to work out. She's a runner, but I wouldn't say like she, it's not like she's a runner. Oh my, runner. she's probably so scared. Because oh, she's feel, terrified. I would feel terrified because I'm like I have anxiety right now thinking <laughs> about it. <laughs> because like that would be me. It would yeah. be like I would just have to take the plunge, commit to the lifestyle you're talking about, and mm-hmm. it's scary. Well, the thing is, it's not like people have to know when I say like I'm dedicated. That's not to say, like, there isn't a week where, oops, I accidentally miss a long run or, oops, I accidentally miss, like, three runs. Right. I totally do that. You have to make it flexible for your life. Like, you know, we're not all pro athletes where all we do is run. Yeah. We have a life, like a job and everything. So Wait, that reminds me another question before we get into the beginner stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you I, – I don't think you cycle sync, but do you ever worry about running on your period or you just, like, keep the same training plan no matter what? I – keep the same training plan because training is training like everything you're doing it's not like it's a different mindset like I think what you're saying what you said earlier is like people are running for their like right it's the same thing as like you're training everything you're doing is leading up to the big performance um it's like let's just say it's like a performance literally yeah you're putting on a show like you've done the work you've you know memorized your lines practiced yeah practiced like and I think what's really great about doing it while you're cycle syncing is that um you're preparing yourself like let's just say you get your period no that is my worst nightmare (laughs) if I signed up for a fucking marathon and I trained for eight months and I get to the day and I have my period I'm out (laughs) I would be You know what? I actually think if I ever sign up for one, like I am tracking. I'm going to check if I have my period or not. If I have my period, I can't do it. You wouldn't just. I guess uh what you're saying is you would train your body to be capable of doing it. But no, I wouldn't do it. Because here's another thing. Scenario. This past Boston Marathon was completely in downpour rain. Okay. They were running in rain. Now. I actually know that one of my best friends did it. They. Okay. So you saw that they were soaked. And he said his shoes were like puddles. Yeah. Their shirts are like, it was, it was a mess. Yeah. And that's to say, you need to train yourself for any scenario. You need to be prepared. Prepared. You need to practice in rain, actually. But is it not, <laughs> do you not feel like it's kind of messing with your hormones when you do a really fast or really long run on your period? Or you're just like used to it? Honestly, I think my body has gone through so many changes that my, it's like messed up already. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I'm concerned, though, because I finally healed my hormones. So I'm like and I'm finally like cycle syncing and all of that. So I'm like, look, I adjust my workout routine and everything according to my cycle. So when I think about training, it just makes me question it. But it's kind of just like the level inten- of, in- of intensity. It's three to five days out of the month. Maybe those three to five days you do easy pace. Yeah. That wouldn't like mess up your training, right? No. 
Okay. Yeah. But I still stand by. If the marathon day I have my period, I'm not doing it. <laughs> All right. We will we will track before you <laughs> sign up for your marathon. <laughs> okay. Back to beginner's tips. <laughs> um, so okay. let's talk about your sister. Like, okay. Yeah. So what are you, what your sister's scared shitless and you're coaching her. <laughs> Where are you having her start? You could do mindset and I know, technical. Um, mindset, I'm kind of giving the same assurance as in like, hey, yes, you're going to be running like basically every day. The numbers are going to keep getting bigger. Like I'm even, I have like on my phone um, our training plan right now. And I believe in August or July, we hit our 22, like 20 miles to 22. And she was like. Yeah, that's in like she's not like, even two She's months. like, I've never ran more than 13. <laughs> she's, she's ran 13. She's ran a half, but. That's a lot. But she, I also trained her for that too. But like, okay. she's not, that's not to say like, she's like, she runs all the time. Got it. I'm like helping her get so there. But that's so cool. Cause I'm curious how you got right. her there even to half marathon. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like once you, once you run your half marathon, which. You're going to coach me. I'm actually, what are you doing October? What are you doing in October? Stop. Is there a half marathon? We're going to run it. You're going to run it. it? We're, we're both running it. Are you talking about Philly? No, Staten Island here. Okay. It's a nice course. I'm already running it. You're running it. Okay. It's in your calendar. All right. Wait, I'm freaking out. I because got you. my boyfriend might do the Philly marathon. He's done it before. Oh, the one in um, November? I, yes. No. Yeah. November. And I said, or maybe October. I think November. I think it's after the New York. It's like a week after the New York. Is he running Yeah, New they're York? very close together. Is he running New York? No, he did that last year. He did Philly, his okay. first one ever. Okay. And his friends are doing it, so he might do Philly again. And the half is the day before. So I'm considering okay. if he does that, doing mine the day before you could, could be fun. That. But I kind of like that you're just saying this is what we're doing. Yeah, you could do both. Do, is <laughs> it as much of a dedication as the marathon a half? No, you could do eight weeks of training. Because you, you can run a mile, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You could do like eight weeks. I'll make but a plan it's still the whole lifestyle of it all and everything? It's a little toned down. You should charge people. You should really like. I know. Am I a run coach? Maybe I'm like this social whole episode, media run coach. It's been like 35 minutes I know. of run coaching. It's like, do I do social media? Or do okay, I do? so I'm obsessed with this that you just said October we're running it. We're running I'll check it. my calendar after this. I'll send like, you the link. In all seriousness. And we'll sign okay. up. I'm freaking out. Okay, well, we can do it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so how how do you start your sister or me? Um, okay. Let's go with your sister though because you actually have given yes. her a plan. and I start with the mind because – Running is 90% mental, 10% physical. Do you really believe that? Yes. Because that's a wild chunk. It is. And the reason why I believe that is, like I said, in the very beginning, I said, anyone can run. You just put two feet in front of the other. Now, what actually gets you to move your feet is your mind. If you tell yourself you can't move, you can't move. If you tell yourself that you can keep going, you're going to keep going. So if with that mindset in place... Now imagine 26 miles of that. When, you're, when your boyfriend mentioned 20 to 26 is the hardest, it's because you hit the wall. They call mm -hmm. it the wall around 20, 23, 24, 25 is because you are at the final end of this. It's past like three hours and you want to give up, but you're like so close. Your legs are like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like my they hurt. I mm -hmm. can't move them. But your mind's like, you are almost there. You can do it. You train for this. And as you start saying all of that stuff, you, you keep find moving. yourself at the finish line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm also curious. Actually, keep going. So there's mind. I told you. Yes, when I'm excited. Mind, yeah. I have I'm, so this is why I have a podcast because I have so many fucking questions <laughs> and I just want to get the answers ASAP. But let's finish. I know. I'm like getting so excited. I'm like, okay, let's, so let's talk. Let's keep talking. That's an amazing mental note, mental tip though, because then I can tell myself I have trained myself mentally in terms of like I do meditation every day. Like I've, I've practiced the mental work. So yes. like I've already practiced the ninety percent. Oh my gosh, October's <laughs> gonna be a breeze. I can't wait. Oh, October, I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Okay, physical. Let's um, go. Physical. It's a lot of like figuring out how your body moves. Like I said, running is all about mechanics. The reason why maybe you're getting like more tired than someone else is because maybe your form isn't correct or maybe you're more tired because you haven't practiced your breath like breathing. Once you like slowly incorporate all this like breath work, like heart rate, you know, form, all of these things that come together to make your body like move in one motion, then you start to actually see progress. 
because you're like whoa th- this is easy do you know how to move your ha- like do you know how to move your hands like forward and b- instead of like side to side boom you know how to move do you know how to keep your posture straight and like you know your head slightly leaning forward when you run boom posture t- like all of it comes together. How do you recommend someone learn all of that, though? Like, it's a lot of research to mm. when you're running on your own to, like, figure out your posture and everything. Biggest thing that has helped me. Okay. The Nike run app. That's what I started The using. guided runs. So, remember I you. told you I learned that I was running too fast. Mm-hmm. And, like, I learned to slow down and all of a sudden I realized I could run three miles. Nike Run Club app. Coach Bennett, right? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But He's if like, that's you like, here. If that's what you recommend. I clicked. So this is why I say, like, I think I'm I'm low keys trying to train for half marathon because I started the half marathon plan instead of just oh. any plan. So, like, clearly I want to do it. I think I'm just scared to say it and to sign up because it is a big lifestyle shift. Mm-hmm. And there's so many other things I like to do. Workout wise, like I love my classes and whatnot. So fit it in. You can customize your own yeah. plan depending yeah. on your goal. Okay. So you'll if, help me customize. <laughs> oh, absolutely. If you like classes, put it, put all the classes in. But we'll choose classes that are specific for like strength training. Okay. Or hit or or you know like you can pick and choose. Okay. But yeah. So the Nike Run Club app is your biggest recommendation for some for knowing how because it teaches you about form. It teaches you how to slow down. Maybe he's like, hey, you're going. I like what he does. Um, there's different coaches, but Coach Bennett is like the head coach, and he'll say like you're running a five out of ten. Mm-hmm. So you in your mind you're like, okay, five out of ten isn't like me sprinting. Like even he never says ten out of ten. He I think the highest he goes is nine out of ten. Mm-hmm. So it's a mental it's game a me- of like this isn't the hardest I can yeah. go, so I must be able to do it. Exactly. That's awesome. It's, yeah, I love that app because you also connected to Spotify and. This is really funny that I love this about it, but like you can film a TikTok and it doesn't pause. Wait, what? <laughs> you can use your camera and video and it doesn't pause. Maybe I just don't whip my phone out to do anything, but I'm telling you, you really should because like those TikToks pop off. Like see, run yeah, with me. Like if you do a run a half marathon, you're like five miles in. Like it, I know that's true. Wait, that's I great. didn't know that the app. Does, that's so cool. Okay, wait. So before we get into out of alignment, because we do need to do that, we'll yes. make it a little more brief than the running. But running is, just so everyone knows, I didn't go on a crazy tangent for no reason. I really wanted to talk to you about running. So I'm glad that it was your in alignment or yes. I would have just spoken about it after. But my last question on running is just what is your why? I think the biggest question that runners get, I'm sure you get this all the time from people who just have no interest, mm-hmm. are like, why would you ever ever want to run 26 miles why do you want to change your whole lifestyle to run 26 miles that sounds awful you know these people like I'm sure you get Mm -hmm. it all the time what's your answer I will say that all of this has to do with lifestyle I realize the biggest reason why I love doing this regardless of how you know let's just say it's a marathon is because it actually like um molds perfectly into my life there's always this parallel that I found with what I do with my with work and what I do with running is that every time I face a challenge the hills in life I relate it to the hills in running and I've noticed that because as I'm progressing with running also my work like how I envision you know where I want to be and the things that I do with social media I found that they just go hand in hand and it is just such a perfect picture to paint because now I'm like, okay, I if I know how to handle the hills um, in, in marathon training, then I know how to handle the hills in my so- life with social media. I love that because I think that's the main reason I want to do it. I don't like running. I don't. And I never have. And I've always said to Ethan, like, that's your thing. I don't need to be a part of it. But like I said, ever since I had the life realization that I have a choice and I can do literally anything I put my mind to, there's something about just wanting to prove that to myself for the other things in my life. To yes. be like, I thought I couldn't even run a mile and I finished the damn thing because exactly. I put my mind to it. And it must be such a rewarding feeling. And it's never, you know what I also noticed why I love running? It's it's never about a competition with anyone else. Usually people compete. Yes. Mm-hmm. Pace versus like time, whatever. But it, ultimately, you'll realize your biggest competitor is yourself. Yeah. And you just want to keep outdoing you. So would you say that's the biggest benefit of running? Just like dealing with mental and like challenges in your personal life too mm-hmm. just like mental strength 
I think I've gotten so much stronger mentally because of running. Okay, biggest challenge. Biggest challenge with running or? Yeah, biggest benefit was that. And now what's the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge, injury. Yeah. Because when you deal with injury, it's like your world is like falling apart. Because it's like, what did I just do all of that for? Mm -hmm. Or it just feels like there's like a sit you're stuck in a situation that you can't fix. And running is all about control too. Mm -hmm. actually that's another thing is you control your pace you control your body you're in control of everything your plan how fast you want to go but then all of a sudden you get an injury you're no longer in control oh my god that sounds terrifying if I actually put all this work into it <laughs> like that's awful so that's why you you run smart right you train smart and you have a great coach coach Bennett and coach Grace yes I'm in good hands <laughs> <laughs> and she's signing me up for Staten Island great October we're running oh Jen, my god prepare <laughs> I'm terrified okay what is out of alignment for you, Grace? Out of alignment, more. this is more on the business side. Mm -hmm. And I've always found that that's always the case is that um, I like to see the big picture in everything okay. that I do relating to running or work. And so I've noticed in my business is that when I see like these little things like, you know, um, a, a an employee that I have that I, I don't feel confident in taking on full time right now or a client who just like is just um, unprofessional or just kind of creates these like disruptions these little disruptions that I start to see that like start to disrupt my big picture painting that I have for myself I start to like doubt fear and I start to like feel like everything's like not in alignment it sounds again like it's a control thing though yes definitely control I feel like that just the control just kind of seeps into everything in my life yeah I get that. I've been, like just started getting to the point where I'm not future tripping and I'm not overanalyzing the future. I'll get back to that point in a few weeks, but yeah. for right now, feeling very content. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it just ebbs and flows. And then like, like you said, one thing goes not according to plan and you just kind of like spiral. Exactly. I get that. Okay. Let's get into fun facts and favorites. Ending segment. Grace. <laughs> <laughs> what is your top self-care tip? Top self-care tip does running count yeah <laughs> of course okay what's your favorite are you a reader or a podcast listener more so lately more reading okay what's your favorite book right now favorite book right now well I just finished reading um lessons in chemistry oh Have I heard, heard about that? that it's on my list oh it is on your list yeah then I don't want to say anything this you should read it okay it's, it's good I don't see like the biggest type that everyone was saying so it's they, not your favorite book oh that I just oh that I just, I that I just read. your favorite book and you said I didn't really oh, like I thought, it. I thought you said that I just read. <laughs> My bad. Um, okay. Well, I would say I like more of a, like a mystery thriller kind of thing. Okay. Something that just – I think I would say latest, The Silent Patient. I know oh, it's been – I've seen that It's so good. Title. It's really good. I haven't good. read it. Okay. I'll Definitely add that to my list because I've been looking for more fiction that's not romance. Yes. And I feel like the Colleen Hoovers of the world. Yeah. Everyone's just that's always like, been my vibe. And now I, oh, I like can't I, I cannot read another <laughs> page of it. I'm so over it. <laughs> They're all the same. I feel I like okay. they're just easy to read when you're like an entry level. Yeah. Reader. Entry level reader. Yeah. OK. Wellness product you can't live without right now. My wellness product, I would say, is the like the running chews that I usually take with working out but actually it's been really helpful to just like have it you know in the mornings before I start work and it's been really nice and calming is there a certain brand it's called pro bar okay amazing where can the people find you follow your running journey and all things social media your agency yes shout yourself out um so my website is gracefullymade.com um, that's where I have all my agency services and I am also on Instagram at by Grace Lee. Um, same for TikTok, same handle and also a podcast, but it's more, it's called on the grow podcast mm -hmm. and it's more of like a solo, um, journey into my growth and life and all things, everything in between it, it feels like a diary entry exactly it really say, does because uh, i've listened to a bunch of episodes and it feels like i'm yeah. listening to you in your journal it's really cool thank you i love it it's a very different style okay thank you so much grace thanks for having me of course